Wasabi guys, welcome back to another commander video. This time I would like to go over the 30 least played commander options in the format over the past two years. As always, if you appreciate the videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Really helps out. We're getting very close to 40,000. Now going into this, I used edhrec.com as a source of data. And my criteria was pretty simple. I wanted to go for single commanders that would only see play by themselves. So partner commanders were excluded. The new background commanders were excluded. Any commander combination using a companion would be excluded. And even the partners that are specifically partnering with another partner, those would be excluded because you would get decks where just one of them was used. It wouldn't be a total percentage. So we're going to go over the 30 least played commander options. And I want you to get real comfortable with this set symbol because because you're going to be seeing it quite a bit. First one we have here is Siddhar Jabari from Mirage. This is ranked 2,231 with only eight decks built in the past two years. EDH rack for some reason, they don't like holding data longer than two years. Maybe it overwhelms their servers, but I still think it's appropriate. Two years is long enough to really get an idea, a feel for how many people actually want to play these. If it sounds familiar, it's because we have another Cedar. This was the partner commander from 2016, a bit more popular more decks built. The whole idea around flanking is not super appealing though in Commander because there's just not enough to synergize with it. But the trigger to tap a creature when you attack with them is actually pretty cool. It makes it surprisingly more playable than a lot of other commanders here. Next we have Kodama of the North Tree. Similarly, eight decks built, but what we get here is a Shroud Trample 6-4 creature, and that's about it. In green, that would be great if you're talking about limited. However, in Commander, it's not super versatile, it's not that flexible. If your goal is dealing a lot of damage quickly, you're going to want to throw an aura on it, you're going to want to attach an equipment to it. This lets you do neither. Varric's Blade Wing from Dominaria is a similar case where it's just, you know, a good keyword in flying, and you're going to end up, if you pay that kicker cost, with 8 power in the air. So 7 mana for 8 power flying is good and limited. Again, it's not going to be good in Commander. You're just spending way too much mana on something that isn't going to have really an impact outside of combat. And then we have Zuo Chi, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. People are going to get on to me about this, and I'm just here to let you know I mispronounce words, I mispronounce names all the time. You will too if you talk about thousands and thousands of new cards and old cards every single year. And I'm not an expert on Chinese historical figures either, and that's a big part of Portal 3 Kingdoms. So it's pretty simple here. You have a 1, 2, 3 mana creature that basically has hexproof, and it can't be blocked by creatures with horsemanship. So that first part there I think is horrible. Goes without saying you don't get a lot of horsemanship creatures to begin with. So it's really just a hexproof 3 mana 1-2. Next up we have Hunding Gjornarsson. Gjornarsson. Now I'm going to get the Nordic people upset with me. Originally from Legends, it's another set where you get a lot of older, legendary creatures. It's the first time, of course. And you get an ability that you just don't see anymore of Rampage 1. Which means whenever this creature becomes blocked, it gets plus and plus one until end of turn for each creature blocking it beyond the first. So it's almost like flanking, but instead of giving a creature minus one, minus one, you're actually giving hunting plus one, plus one, which I think is better than flanking. However, in blue and white and six mana, it's not ideal. We got another commander option from Mirage Hivis of the Scale. You may choose not to untap Hivis of the Scale during your untap phase. You could tap it to gain control of target dragon. If it becomes untapped or you lose control of Hivis, lose control of that dragon. So this actually went up on the market because of all the emphasis on dragons with Baldur's Gate, seeing as if you can gain control of someone's Miram commander, you can defang their whole strategy. It's a cool gimmick though, long-term value though, I'm not so certain. Only seven decks made, rank 2,324. We have Isoka Minamo Sensei, second one you're going to see here from Kamigawa. You can pay three mana and discard a card to counter target spell if it has the same converted mana cost as the discarded card. So this is basically what you would get out of Kozilek if you like playing Kozilek as a commander. However, you are paying mana and discarding a card, so it makes it a lot less good. <laughs> I like the ability, I like any time where you have a counter spell on a commander, really allows you to be in full control of the game. And we're starting to see the percentage of all decks built. It's barely registering as a decimal percentage. So it goes to show people just aren't interested in these at all. I think it's kind of cool though. Ranked 2,327. And then we have Miagen of Knight's Reach. There are people who are upset with my pronunciation of certain words, and this is one of them. It's Miagen or Myagen or Miogen or something. Again, I'm not an expert. I don't prioritize pronouncing every single word correctly. I just try to. This is a commander option that's not really 
bad, the ability is incredibly strong. If you're able to return it to your hand, it could be one of the most powerful plays all game. All you would need to do is synergize forcing discard on your opponents using things like Liliana's Caress, and they're incredibly dead. You need to be able to play it from your hand though, so you'd have to bounce it from the command zone or on the battlefield back to your hand, then replay it so it gets to the divinity counter. That's a lot of mana you're investing just to get off that trigger at least one time. So only seven decks built, again, 0.001% of all decks in Commander, and it's ranked 2,328. Again, keep in mind we're not going over partner commanders, so if the rank seems like we're skipping some, it's because we're skipping a lot of partner combinations that obviously wouldn't see play because they're just not good together, or background commanders, companion options, all that stuff. And then we have Rashka the Slayer from Homeland. Can block creatures with flying, so reach. And if assigned to block any black creatures, Rashka the Slayer gets plus one power and plus two toughness until end of turn. So she's a good blocker. Uh, the problem is that she's five mana for only three three. And no one's gonna play a commander just to block, so you need a little something else there. And then we have Ishi Ishi Aki Crackshot. This one, if it didn't require an opponent to play these, if this triggered off of something that you played, shock something for two damage, and it was off of playing spirits and arcane spells, I would be all about this commander because it's two mana, but all it really is is a hate bear. It's something that you would play in order to hurt on other opponents who are playing spirit decks and arcane decks, which one of them is more common, but to only play a commander because you want to stop spirit decks, it's not something that people are looking to do, and it reflects on the total decks built 6, and it's ranked 2,348. And then we get another Portal 3 Kingdoms commander option, Lady Soon. Three mana on your turn. Before you attack, you may tap her to return it and any one other creature to their owner's hands. Believe it or not, this is far from the worst option out of this set. And a lot of the reason why you don't see a lot of these commanders built is because they're a combination of not just poor, they don't do enough, but they're also incredibly expensive. I mean, even looking at some of the worst commander options here, you're still going to be spending way too much money. We have Go Shintai of Boundless Vigor. This is one of the newer ones on this list, and it's no surprise you don't have to be an expert to understand why this wouldn't see a lot of commander play as a commander, because it's a shrine-focused strategy and you're only really able to play mono green if you go with this one. Since they're all legendary, it makes it harder to abuse them. Only six decks built ranked 2,383. Then we have Casimir the Lone Wolf from Legends. This is a vanilla creature of 5-3 for 6 mana, in blue and white. Nothing to really write home about. If there's value in owning this, it's because Richard Kane Ferguson is like one of the best artists in Magic the Gathering's history. Outside of that, it's not really one of the more sought after Legends commander options. Doesn't do anything, and that's a big reason why it's only maybe a few dollars. We got another Miagin or Myagin, the one of Cleansing Fire. It's a board wipe, it's even less desirable than Knight's Reach because you could really hurt your opponents by forcing them to discard their hands. You have a board presence where it's just me a gin of cleansing fire and all other creatures are destroyed. It's not awful, it's not unplayable, but again, you would need a way to bounce it back to your hand, replay it to get the divinity counter, and all of that in white is gonna be hard to get to at eight mana. Only six decks built again, but ranked 2,386. We get another Portal 3 Kingdoms commander option, Menguo, Barbarian King. Five mana, mono green, other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I love it. Compared to a lot of other options you're gonna see in the set, I think the standard is, so long as it doesn't really hurt you, it's good. <laughs> but it's another expensive one. You're gonna be spending a lot because of that Portal 3 Kingdoms premium. I'd also like to point out you get good creature types here, Human Barbarian Soldier, so that might matter to some of you. We get Major Taro from Torment, and I know what you're thinking. This has to be a bird tribal commander. Nope. It's a bird soldier, 2-3 uh, with flying, and you can pay five mana to sacrifice him to remove all black creatures from the game. So situationally, that could be pretty strong, but that's all that you really have here on a commander. There's no real goal here in winning. It's not even like Meng Huo, where you can give your green creatures more power to attack. It's just if your opponents are playing black creatures, they're suddenly not playing black creatures anymore. Only five decks rank 2,472. We get another Go Shintai. This one is of Hidden Cruelty. Not much difference between this and the previous Go Shintai. It's just even fewer decks are built, and the rank is 2,503. We get Huangzang Shu General, four mana white. Can't be blocked by more than one creature each turn. 
I think this is actually pretty good because all it would take is giving this menace, which would require more than one creature to block it. So the combination of those two would mean he's unblockable. Again, surprisingly playable compared to a lot of other options from the same set. But only four decks built, so even fewer than anything we've seen so far. Rank 2528. Hope you like Ugly because we got Grandmother Sengir. This five mana mono black human wizard from Homelands says pay it two and tap to have target creature get minus one minus one until end of turn that's got to be one of the worst abilities ever it's very easy to understand why some of these don't see a lot of play you would actually have to go out of your way to try to build a bad commander deck with these and i can't see this being good outside of maybe combining it with Hirobi death's whale that way you're actually getting something for targeting a creature but that's incredibly situational that's a best case scenario this is way too much mana to do very little to nothing so only four decks built ranked 2531 and then we have Talim Tor from Mirage. Also four decks built, but we get a flanking focused commander. Talked about that at the very beginning. Too specific with not enough support around it. And even if it had the support, I just don't think flanking's that interesting. It's just old school small ball magic. Again, only four decks built, ranked 2571. We get Lusu Wu Advisor. On your turn before you attack, you may tap Lusu to draw a card. Five mana commanders that do this. We have better ones for the same mana, like Azami Lady of Scrolls, and you don't have to do it before you attack. And oh yeah, yeah, you can tap your other creatures to draw cards too. It's another case of this being all premium and little actual playability. And then we have Sun Chi, Sun Chi, Young Conqueror. Listen folks, it's one of those videos. This is when we talk about horsemanship because these commanders are actually not horrible if you're building around them for the purpose of Ultron. And when he enters, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. So the combination of those two, you could seriously build a strong Voltron commander deck around it. Now back in the earlier days of commander, even before 2011's introductory product, something like horsemanship was incredibly busted because it's just flying that even fewer creatures are able to answer. So you would just be able to attack unblocked the whole game. Only four decks built, ranked 2,596. Then we get Zhang He, Wei General. Same case here, we got another five mana horsemanship commander option. A little bit more power behind it gives all of your other creatures plus one power until end of turn when he attacks. But again, similarly, only four decks built, ranked 2,606. Then we have Pang Tong, Young Phoenix. On your turn before you attack, you may tap Pang Tong to give any one creature plus two toughness until end of turn. That is pretty bad, but no surprise here. That's what the video is about. We have Zhou Yu, Chief Commander, seven mana. But get this, Zhou Yu can't attack unless your opponent has an island in play. So it wasn't bad enough that you're spending seven mana on a vanilla 8-8, but you can't even attack with it unless an opponent is also playing your same colors. Only four decks built, ranked 2,633. We have Cal Ren, Wake Commander. I actually used to play this as a commander option, believe it or not. One that does see a bit more play is Shi Hao Dune, and that's because he has a pretty cool graveyard ability. This was my budget alternative to that, like back in 2013, because he was nowhere near as expensive as Shi Hao Dune. You just didn't have that good ability, and you still had to pay like three life. But at only four mana, this was pretty decent. It was easy to get him out there early, and you could just start adding equipments, auras, and making him more powerful and dealing that commander damage. Only four decks built, ranked 2,646. Now's when it's gonna get really interesting, the top four, or bottom four, I guess we could call it. We have Zuji Jin, Wu Strategist. I wonder if you pronounce that like Suge Knight. I'm gonna get a lot of comments talking about the pronunciations for these. And strangely enough, I'll get people upset with me just talking about these cards not seeing a lot of play, like I'm insulting their boy. Like, that's my boy, why are you talking bad about my boy? It's like, I'm not talking bad about your boy and pointing out the statistics the facts. You'll live. So on your turn before you attack, you may tap Zuge Jin to make any one creature unblockable this turn. I like that. That's definitely more playable than a lot of the ones that we've seen with more decks built around them. If you have Infect, this would be really strong. And as one of the 99, I think this would be even stronger. Again, it has the Portal 3 Kingdoms premium. It's even harder to find than a lot of Legends cards. We have Zhao Zelong, Tiger General. Another horsemanship one, but when he blocks, he gets plus and plus one until end of turn. 
So it's a minimal little combat ability, it's not horrible, but certainly isn't enough outside of the horsemanship to justify building a commander deck around him. But this one has only two decks built in just the past two years. Ranked 3064. That's a lot of possible commander decks. Now we get on to the final two here with only one deck built around it in the past two years. We have Jun Yu, Wei Advisor. On your turn before you attack, you may tap him to give one of your creatures plus two power until end of turn. If this seems familiar, it's because it's pretty much the exact opposite of Pang Tong. The only point in that one's favor is that it has an extra toughness. All it does is give an extra 2 power, pretty simple, but not enough to really inspire creativity. Ranked 3257. And the lowest ranked card here is Zheng Liao, Hero of Hefei. Six mana in black. When Zheng Liao successfully damages your opponents, they have to choose and discard a card from their hand. So it's your standard specter ability where you deal combat damage they have to discard, but those abilities are good if you have a lot of flying creatures, a lot of creatures with evasion, and they're generally cheaper than this. So six mana to do the same thing without any other good keywords for evasion and only being a 3-3 definitely works against it. Ranked 3,282 out of different commander possibilities with partners and backgrounds. It's pretty interesting to find out just how little some of these see play. So that's going to do it for the video. Let me know what you think about the 30 least played commander options in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video again, subscribe to the channel. I try to make at least one every other day. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.